When I discovered that I had a talent for art, I went into it as uh, wanted to be creative. And now that I understand being creative and how creativity can connect with people and uh, bring people together, I look at it as par partly my duty um, to inspire others, to inspire other artists, to inspire people that's not artists. I've always had a saying, and I always go by the saying, it's better to give than receive. I know in my artwork, I'm gonna give more than I ever receive. And, and guess what? I wouldn't want any other way. This is Tyson Knight, and this is The Art of Hustle. Alright, so I'm about to get ready, get out there in the streets, and do some art. I would like for people to connect to their inner child side of themselves, that, that side of themselves before life got too serious. I would like my art to take you back to a place that you were at one point in your life. And when you look at the art, you see that place and you feel like, wow, I remember when I was a kid and I had big dreams and aspirations. I got a few artists that inspire me. Um, my top three are um, John Michel Basquiat, he's one. Uh, my number two is Andy Warhol. And my number three is Keith Haring. They all were, uh, well, except for Andy Warhol, they all were graffiti artists coming up in New York City in the late 70s, early 80s. But I also have influences from fine art, uh, Pablo Picasso. He was actually a fine artist, but if you looked at some of his later work, it had a certain graffiti street art style to it. I don't know if he was going that route with it, but for what I see, I see a graffiti art style to some of his later works than more of his earlier works. I applied for a uh, art show in Palm Springs, California at the Desert Art Center. And um, they said you could submit one piece of artwork and I've sent a piece of artwork to them. This is a, a piece that I did. I call this a remixed masterpiece, which means I've, uh, I've taken a uh, famous painting by Picasso named La Revie and what I did was I uh, took inspiration from his original work and I recreated that. And to me, I call it a remixed masterpiece. As I looked on their website uh, for the Desert Art Center, I seen that they're more into fine art. And um, I'm a street artist. And if I get submitted, if I get, well, what I submitted, if I get chosen, um, I'll probably be, I'll be the first street artist to ever be in this gallery, which would be pretty cool. I mean, that's groundbreaking. They're all pretty much the same, except for pop, pop art is kind of something that uh, is more on the uh, Andy Warhol type side. But the urban art and street art, just, it just was born of, uh, of people just, you know, in, in inner cities uh, with spray paint cans. And, you know, just doing, it called it vandalism, um, but it, it spawned from graffiti. So that's a lot of my influence because when I was a child growing up in New Jersey, um, I would see all the beautiful art and graffiti and the colors on the side of the trains. And that fascinated me to see that on a train. I was like, wow, someone actually did that and how long did it take them to do that? And um, that's what made me want to go out and spray on stuff. You know, I, that was it, I mean, I, I, that, I was hooked. First time I ever seen, I was hooked. My parents took me over to New York City. First time I seen, I was hooked. Actually, people, what happened, what people would do is they would write their name and someone would do it in bubble letter, block letter. Every, every person had their different style. Every artist had their different style of how they would express themselves. And they were writing. I couldn't understand a lot of the writing because I was so small, but I could just understand the colors and, and the different textures they used and how they sprayed and how it left no, any marks. And, 
It's just that color choices was amazing to me. And I was like, wow. This is just some people just, you know, some artists that just say, you know what, I'm just gonna spray on something. So to see that come alive was like, whoa. Blanco was, um, he's a pretty interesting guy. He's a uh, tattoo artist as well as a graffiti artist. My name is Blanco. I tattoo out of Blue Rose Tattoo. I'm a big, big fan of art. I love graffiti, tattooing, piercing, anything that has to do with art. I started back in sixth grade at Raymond Cree Middle School, Palm Springs. And ever since that, I started uh, finding out my mom was an artist growing up. So it kind of like encouraged me to like go more and more with it. Do I think that graffiti artists and street artists will make good type of money? I think they can. Um, I think we can. I'm a street artist. Um, but it's really hard, especially when you have a lot of negative activity out there and a lot of disrespect from people. Um, it's really hard out there, man, on the streets. Like, people just scratch you out not knowing who you are, not knowing how long you've been grinding for, and it could just be like some new guy that just started on the, on the block. What do I think about Tyson Knight? He has the heart to go out there and just show the, the art in the, in, the, in the streets. Like, he just, he's all about the love and he just wants to be out there with us. And uh, Tyson Knight, man, he's a really good guy. He's a, he's a homie to me. Do I see Tyson Knight artwork furthering? Yes, I do. Just because of his heart, he has, he has a heart for it. That's all you need. You just have to have the heart and you can't let no one bring you down. You just gotta keep on doing you. My name is Theron Ruiz, and uh, I like to collect modern art and uh, street art. My name is Anastasia Habar, and I like to collect street art. I think uh, street art has more personality behind it. You can see pain, you can see love, you can see, you know, the road, the journey that they've been on, and uh, it really expresses, you know, more of the person's soul than just, you know, what they're thinking and how they're feeling. Street art means to me um, just emotion, a lot of emotion that's built up in yourself and it doesn't have to be sad or bad, um, it could be just happiness and excitement but a lot of people cannot express, like for instance myself, there's a lot of times where I cannot express how I feel about certain things and for people that um, do street art or graffiti that's their way of taking it out and for me it is in the gym, for me it's being an athlete and working on myself and working with him, that's my way of taking it out. And for others, you know, it's art, for some it's music. I think, you know, there there's bad types and there's good types, you know, there's bad types as in there, it's like gang related and stuff like that and there's hate behind it, you know what I mean? When there's love, there's you could never go wrong, you know, you're going to love expressing yourself, you know, and truly showing yourself as a person. I mean, it's going to be beautiful no matter what, if it's just to that one person, to five people or 2,000 of people that get to see it, you know what I mean? But uh, I think I think there's different types, and to me, I think it's all beautiful, you know, being able to see all this different artwork. When they really put their effort into it, and you see different, really, like, vibrant colors and different, you know, characters, I like to see a lot of facial portraits and stuff like that, and, like, that's, that's badass right there. Well, right now we're on the uh, 10 freeway. Uh, we're on our way to Venice Beach. I'm gonna go out there and um, put up some street art, uh, talk to uh, other street artists, you know, get their feel for, you know, how, how they hustle and sell their artwork on Venice Beach. This is the SDP Foundation. We've been having this wall for about three years now. Our crew comes here every weekend. We have to be here every weekend. We have to take care of the walls. We have to make sure that everything runs smoothly and nobody's vandalizing, nothing like that. We do have people that, from being a graph artist, they turn into um, tattoo artists. Tattoo artists, and then like you have bigger people that do the murals that go to like different countries and stuff like that. Uh, I've been with them for three years and 
It's fantastic, bro. I'm over here just like walking around, make sure everything's okay, yeah. make sure everything's fine. And if cops do come, I just have to talk to them. Yeah. I'm from the foundation and everything. And I just have to call up the person to make sure so that the officers won't, won't get all mad and yeah. start tripping about stuff. Organization is STP Foundation, and we take care of the walls at Venice Beach. I met a homeless artist. His name was Scratch. Now, to me personally, he's probably, I'm not going to say probably, he is the most fascinating artist that I've had the pleasure of actually being on this documentary with me. I started drawing when I was three and about till say 12, I drew exactly the way I draw now, which was psychedelic. And I uh, got introduced to pastels and acrylics and I did portraitures, facial features. I did them fantastic, I learned them in a week. Uh, the gentleman was uh, Walter Gutierrez who worked for Disney and taught me. And I got out and I went back to my same old tricks. And then I got uh, divorced, cracked up, and so here I am. And I picked up my art again. Pretty much between revivals, where I get my frames, where I find frames out in the desert, and I don't want anything perfect. Because to me, for what I do, perfection is best sought after by imperfection. Tyson Knight, let me tell you, is a fabulous street artist. Catch one of his pieces. I would say him being homeless does, Scratch being homeless does, help his creativity. And I got one reason why I feel that way. Because when you're, when you don't, you're not worrying about materialistic things and, and American dream and keeping up with the Joneses and, and driving a big fancy car and, and the rat race of having money. I think things in life become a little simpler. And I think one thing he told me that resonated with me was that he would walk through the desert and find old frames and use those frames, then go to Michael's and get paint and paint on discarded frames someone thought was ugly and didn't want. And that, and, that, and that ugliness, he's seen creativity, he's seen beauty. So my artist's name is Victoria Black. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. And one of them is uh, Victoria's my real name and then I have a really long Spanish name, <laughs> Victoria Carmen Ramirez Martinez. So it goes on and on and on. Um, my preferred medium is charcoal and pastel, a little bit of ink. I've built, um, I've built my signature work around that. Uh, I, I'm calling it abstract cubism, though I know that's not really like a figurative form of art or anything, but I'm calling it abstract cubism because it's really abstract and there's no real uh, figuratism to it. Making art, especially Los Angeles and the, these places where there's tons of artists, everybody wants to uh, get their name out there. It's a little bit tricky because you have to be really good at marketing. You have to have your promotion. You have to be Twitter, 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 Facebook, Instagram, uh, you know, and the people that are successful is because they're, they're really good at the marketing skills. Uh, there's this painting by Tyson that, uh, that I really enjoy by Picasso, The Dream, The Dream, the painting The Dream by Picasso, and he does it in his own way giving it its, his own artist flavor that really brings back the piece to, to life in a, in a nice way. The reason I chose that particular piece I call the remixed masterpiece um, is my take on Picasso's Lography. And the reason I chose that particular art piece is because I think that art piece not only speaks to street art, but I think also Collectors of fine art will appreciate um, that piece. I mean, I think it crosses all genres of art. Um, and I think that, um, you know, I could capture a bigger audience with that particular piece than more, than more so more of my uh, street art pieces that I do. I think that one with the, with, with the play on Picasso and the, the colors, and it, it could be, um, it could be, street art or it can be fine art. 
or it can be modern art. I mean, I think that it's, it's, it, it fits in all genres of art. So I selected that piece, and I think it's a pretty cool piece too. I, you know, I enjoy doing that piece. I think uh, it look good on someone's wall, and I think they will appreciate it and pass it down for generations to come. Okay, Tyson came by our gallery, I believe last spring, or early October, and wanted to join our gallery to be able to show his work. And so we explained our jury process, where about 50 people are applied for being artists, and Tyson applied, and out of 50 people, about 15 were accepted as more jury members, and he was one of them. The art show was amazing. Um, I'm just so blessed and so thankful that I had the opportunity to be a part of something big like that. And I just feel like that's just confirmation for me to keep going. Sky's the limit. Your art is, is for millions and millions of people to see and for people to enjoy. Even when I'm dead and gone, uh, my artwork should um, be a representation of something positive on this planet. Sometimes in life, you're born into situations where you have no control over. But I'm here to tell you, Tyson Knight is here to tell you. Your creativity, your perseverance, and more importantly, your hustle will make you the artist you want to be. Don't let nobody tell you anything different. Master the art of hustle, and you master your life. This is Tyson Knight, and this is the art of hustle.